So today I want to talk about bloom filters. So bloom filters are what are called an approximate member query data structure or an approximate member data structure. A bloom filter is a special data structure that guarantees that if you have seen something, it will be reported as being there. So if there's something in your data set and we've seen it already and then you tell me or you ask me, have you seen this? Then I guarantee I'll say yes. However, I cannot guarantee that if I report something as being true, that it really is. So what this means is that if I say something is not there, it's really not there. If I've seen something and you ask me, is it there, then I guarantee I'll say it's there as long as I've seen it. If it's not there, I won't report it. This is a true positive, and I will be correct on true positives all of the time. If something's there, I'll tell you it's there. This is a false positive, which is something's not there, and I tell you that it is there. The bloom filter will be correct on true positives, but will be incorrect on false positives. Another way of phrasing that is that the bloom filter cannot, cannot give you a false negative. So just to remind you, a false negative is if I say something is not present, but really it is. So the bloom filter cannot give you a false negative. However, the bloom filter can give you a false positive. So what that means is that if I say something is really there, actually it may not be there. I may be lying. And so the bloom filter is an approximate data structure because it's approximately right. It won't give you false negatives, that's for sure. It won't tell you something's not there if it really is. However, sometimes it will tell you things are there when actually they're not. So let's take a look at how the bloom filter actually works. To start with, we're going to have multiple hash functions. So let's say I have hash function 0, hash function 1, hash function 2, and hash function 3. Each of these is going to take a KMA string and return, for example, an int. And the key to the Bloom filter is that each of these methods has to be independent. And if possible, they have to turn, return very different numbers for similar strings. Now, let's say I have a KMA. I've got KMA number 1. And I pass KMA number 1 to my different hash functions. So I've got hash function 0, hash function 1, hash function 2, and hash function 3. And when I pass KMA 1 to hash function 0, I get a value of 5. When I pass hash function, uh, sorry, KMA 1 to hash function 1, I get a value of 12. When I pass KMA 1 to hash function 2, I get a value of 7. And when I pass KMA 1 to hash function 3, I get a value of 3. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a big array of bits and for each 
of these values from this hash functions, I'm going to set the bits to be 1 at these locations. So for k more 1, I got a value of 5, so I'm going to set this bit to be true. Then for hash for k more 1, for hash function 1, I got a value of 12, so I'm going to set this bit to be true. For k more 1, for hash function 2, I got a value of 7, so I'm going to set bit 7 to be true. And for k more 1, for hash function 3, I got a value of 3, and so I'm going to set bit 3 to be true. Now, I come back in with another kma, so here's kma number 2. And I pass it through my same four hash functions. So for kma 2, for hash function 0, I get a value of 18. For hash function 1, I get a value of 9. For kma 2, for hash function 2, I get a value of 11. And for kma 2, for hash function 3, I get a value of, th of 5. I do the same thing. For each of these, I set these bits to be true. So I start with 18, and I set 18 to be true. Then I get a value of 9, I set 9 to be true. Then I get a value of 11, I set 11 to be true. And then I get a value of 5, and I set 5 to be true, but 5 is already true. That's okay, I just leave it as true. I don't unset it or do anything else, I just set it as true. So now that I've set my bloom filter, I can come back and query it. So let's say I come back with kma1, and I want to know, have I seen kma1 already? So I run it through my same hash functions, and remember that for a hash function, if you pass the same string, you should get the same answer back in the same running of the code. And so for each of my four hash functions, I get the same answers. So now I'm querying to say, have I seen kma1? So I test, is 5 true? Yes, it is. Is 12 true? Yes, it is. Is 7 true? Yes, it is. Is 3 true? Yes, it is. If all of the bits are true, then I've seen that kma. So now I know that I've seen that, and I've got a true positive, and I say, yes, I've seen it. Now suppose I come in with a totally different kma, kma number 3, and I do the same thing. I pass that kma through my hash function, and so I get, uh, let's say, 15 for the first hash function, I get 10, I get 21, I get 16 for my other hash function. Now, if I want to know, have I seen this kma before, and I have not seen this kma before, I say, is 15 true? No, it's not. Since that bit's not true, I don't even have to query the rest of the bits, right? Because that's not true. So if that's not true, I have not seen that kma. Otherwise, this would be set. Since the very first bit's not set, I can return false. I haven't seen kma3. Um, it's new to me. So in this case, I've got a true negative. I say I haven't seen it, and I return that information. Now, suppose I come with a completely different kma. And suppose this time, with kma number 4, when I run my code for hash function 0, I get um, 11. For hash function 1, I get 5. For hash function 2, I get 3, and for hash function 3, I get 18. This is a new kma that I haven't seen before. My hash functions are all different. But when I test, have I seen this, I say, is 11 true? Yes. Is 5 true? Yes. Is 3 true? Yes. Is 18 true? Yes, it is. So I would say, I've, g I've seen this kma before, even though, in fact, I haven't. So I'm telling you it's here, even though it's not, so I'm getting a false positive. This is why 
the Bloom filter is an approximate data structure because occasionally, occasionally, you can get the wrong answer. Now, the probability that you get the wrong answer is dependent on how many hash functions you have, but more importantly, it's dependent on the size of your array. If you've got a bigger array, if you've got more bins, more buckets to put things in, then you're going to have less collisions. You're going to have less opportunity for different k-mers to give you the same answer with different hash functions. It's also dependent a little bit on if there's an interconnectedness between your hash functions. But the biggest factor is just the size of the array that you have here. And so you can actually choose the probability with which you're likely to get false positives from a Bloom filter.